Well, good Tuesday morning to you. A little dreary again outside this morning, but uh, looks like there's some sunshine and some warmth coming here later in the week. So looking forward to that, but we do need the moisture, so I keep telling myself that. But I like the sun and the warmth, so hopefully that'll find us too here before long. Um, so yeah, we are in Psalm 127 this morning. And this is actually a psalm from Solomon, or he gets credit for it anyway. So, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with centuries will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. Um, how joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He will not be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the city gates. So, Solomon again giving some wisdom here in this psalm. And um, he just starts out with, unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. So again, uh, the Lord is building houses and he says the Lord protects the city. Looking at this, yeah, we, we build houses and we, and there's houses going up all over. It's like with supposedly money shortage and lumber prices, it doesn't seem to be slowing anything down. Somebody's always building a house. But there's more to it than just building that physical structure. Um, what's going on in the home? Um, who's building the home? in there is it just um, you and your spouse um, in charge of things and living life the way you want or is god building your home is god the the the, the builder the the foundation the king the ruler the guide the lead um, is god a part of your home is it part of your family uh, not just a part of but is he the builder of um, if not, your, your home life is kind of wasted because it's built on selfishness and selfish needs rather than on glorifying God and building the kingdom. Um, he says, unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with centuries will do no good. Uh, in these times of these writings, yeah, you had to protect your city and they had walls around their cities and they had stations on top of those walls where you could look out and make sure no one was sneaking up on you or trying to attack you. Um, but God's, Solomon's saying even with that, unless it's the Lord protecting your city, we do our part and we, you know, we work to, to keep things safe, but God needs to be watching over us. We need to be looking for his protection because um, it doesn't matter how many guards we have or how many, uh, what are those ring bell things now at your doors where you have the cameras and stuff. Uh, if people want in, they're going to get in. And... Uh, and, and so we need to be giving ourselves and looking to the Lord for protection. Um, one writer said, who's protecting our churches? You know, who's watching over the, the spiritual truths and the guidance and the leadership from God's word coming out of our churches? Unfortunately, today there are many churches that aren't preaching the, the, the full word or the whole word. They're not preaching um, the gospel of Jesus. There are a lot of churches out there talking about love, but love becomes 
anything goes. Uh, God loves you. He, he loves you just the way you are, so you can do whatever you want and be whoever you are. And yet, the scriptures teach us that we're all sinners separated from God. Uh, and we need a Savior. Um, who's protecting that word in your church? Who's protecting that truth? Um, there needs to be men and women uh, giving their hearts and their lives uh, to God in, in following him and in prayer and seeking his protection over our churches uh, so that the truth can continue to be spoken and proclaimed. He says it's useless for you work so hard from early morning to late at night, anxiously working for food to eat. Um, there's nothing wrong with working hard there's nothing wrong with getting up early in the morning to work or working late at night. But when all we're doing is working for ourselves, working to make money so we can get stuff and things, um, we get wore out. Uh, we get tired of chasing. We, uh, you ever see people, and maybe you yourself get this way sometimes. I do when I get overly busy and I kind of lose sight of what, what the goal is. You feel like you're just that hamster on the wheel in the cage, just running as fast as you can, and you're not going anywhere. Uh, we work, 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 and it just doesn't seem like we ever get ahead. And we work, 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 work to get all the stuff so that we think we can be happy. And we just have to keep working because there's something else out there that's going to make us happier or shiny that's going to draw our attention. Uh, Solomon says God gives rest to his loved ones. Um, when our focus is on God and, and his kingdom and following him, uh, yeah, we're, we're still going to work hard. Uh, but we're not going to be working hard and just spinning our wheel we're going to be uh, working again for the kingdom. And I thought it was interesting. Uh, one of the writers or commentators said, we can get tired in God's work, but we don't get tired of God's work. And so, yeah, there's, there's weeks where I'm tired in God's work. We have busy weeks here with Psalm series and then journey and the normal Sunday mornings, and then if we have people who are sick or funerals, or you add on there, and suddenly you're trying to you're trying to keep up, and we can get tired in the work that God gives us, but I don't get tired of it. I don't I don't get tired of these mornings. I get tired of getting up, <laughs> but I don't get tired of meeting with you and and sharing God's word. So if you're getting tired a lot, look to see uh, what you're doing and what you're pursuing. Um, we might be chasing the wrong stuff. We might be on the wrong wheel. And because um, God will give us the rest that we need. So um, keep that in mind as you're going through your days and your weeks. Uh, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He will not be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the city gates. Um, now again, this is a verse that can be taken out of context. It can use to, to guilt trip people. In this culture, uh, children were... Um, seen as a gift from God. Children were seen as a necessity to continue the work. Uh, years ago, when so many people, we lived on farms, uh, you needed kids to keep the farm going. You needed the work. And I don't mean that to sound bad, but there was a, um, a need and a purpose. And so it was looked at as a reward from God. In this culture, if you didn't have kids, you were assumed to be a sinner. You were a sinner and God was punishing you. So Solomon is saying, 
yeah, the, the kids are a gift from God. And they are to us today. Um, again, one of the writers said every child born is God's vote for the future. Uh, the future of his world, the future of his gospel being proclaimed, the future of his kingdom being built. And so again, it's what are we doing with our kids? How are we raising our, our children? Um, are they... Are they living for the kingdom? Are we helping them to find a relationship with Jesus and helping them to follow him? It's getting tougher and tougher today. Uh, it's tougher now than it was when I was a kid. Um, but I don't think it's any tougher today than it was probably in Solomon's time. These people are, again, probably coming out of captivity and... Uh, in getting ready to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. And so there's hard work ahead. And there's um, enemies around them. The enemies don't want Jerusalem rebuilt. They don't want the city walls rebuilt. And that's why Nehemiah even records that um, the workers worked with their tools in one hand and their sword in another. They were always on guard for an attack. Uh, so I don't think their culture was any different. It was different, but not any easier than ours. Um, and so they worked hard to, to teach their kids, to bring them up in the ways of God. And we have to ask ourselves, are we getting too busy in, in our world? Are we getting too busy with our jobs and trying to chase all the shiny objects to not pass on the truths of a relationship with with God to our kids and that it's needed today uh, you're not going to see that on the TV you're not going to see that on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or TikTok you're going to see oftentimes in fact quite the opposite and that's why it's so important for us as parents and grandparents to continue to pour in to our kids. And it's not just our kids. Um, again, I said this could be used as kind of a guilt trip to people. Not everybody is meant to have kids. God doesn't have kids in the plan for every person, every family. But it doesn't mean they still can't be involved in helping to raise kids. Again, in the church, you're supporting your kids by uh, helping with Sunday school. You're praying for your kids. We can sit here in our neighborhood and look out and see the kids running around in our neighborhood. Can you pray for them? Just ask God to draw them to himself. Uh, I, uh, Mandy was just telling us a story last night of of a man sharing his story of growing up, not in the church, but looking back over his life and seeing how God drew him to the church through just different little events in his life um, that he would have never thought of. He didn't plan out, but God was just always there. Are we the neighbors that are there praying for our kid, praying for the neighbor kids across the street? Um, so we, we can do those kinds of things, even if we don't have our own kids, even if we're empty nesters, we can still be investing in the kids around us in, uh, whatever shape or form that might be. Um, and he says he won't be put to shame when he's, conf when he confronts his accusers at the city gates. Everything took place at the city gate. You have this walled-in city, and then there's one main gate that everybody can, can come in and out of. And that's actually where the, the court was held, was in that area. And so you went there for um, court, and if people were there accusing you, you had kids there uh, as protection. But as, if the city's being attacked by enemies... You have, again, a family there uh, working to help protect the city. The family unit was very, very, very important to God. It was the training place uh, that God had 
planned and his and structured to to continue teaching the ways of the world within this little microcosm of the family and so we learned um, we learned love we learned discipline we learned respect for authority we uh, we learned work we learn everything within the family so that then we can go out into the world and influence the world for the kingdom and um, that doesn't always seem to be the case today. Um, but that doesn't mean that we as followers of, of God don't continue to press on in that way with our families. And when others aren't doing it, it just makes it harder for us to do. But it doesn't mean we don't do it. Um, so we look for God to build our homes, to build our churches, build our families um, and that's what we need to be praying about <clears throat> so let's do that now so father we thank you for the wisdom of Solomon and we thank you for the his challenge today would we be parents grandparents uh, who who have you as our builder we're pointing our own hearts our own goals in life are, are under your watch. Our own families are being pointed to you and to your word and to your ways. Would we be people who, who protect our churches? Would we be people who call out for the gospel to be proclaimed loud and clear? Um, Yes, you are a God of love, but you're a God of truth. And the truth is we're sinners. We aren't all okay. We aren't all created to be who we think we are. We are all sinners in need of a savior. So help us to proclaim that truth in our churches. And help us to raise our children to be followers of you we ask that you would draw our children to you would you help draw our neighborhood kids would you use us somehow to draw neighborhood kids to you so that you can build your kingdom and you can change hearts and lives forever through jesus and it's in his name we pray. Amen. So good to see uh, Gail and Steve and Elaine and Lynette and Sherry. Thanks for joining us this morning. And I uh, hope you have a great day. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.